on 12 trains. So only 12. The other hundreds and hundreds are still available, and 23andMe will send you your data so you can access them, but you have to use a third provider. Another cheap um, sort of uh, uh, in my opinion, flaky uh, platform, which is uh, which you upload your data to, and you can get the same old reader if you've got a decade ago before the FDA school the pay. That third party is totally unregulated, and has actually been shown by some academic research to actually be entirely inaccurate in how it interprets um, these, uh, these genetic metrics. So that's the space as the FDA say it, see it, but this is the space as the commercial environment sees it, with a propagation of companies offering various different types, and some of them will be, be directly marketed to you. So what's um, uh, where, where it sits? Well, the, the penetrant Mendelian disease space, and you can access this very easily, through very reputable com companies, uh, companies, I might add, um, is, is, um, is, some, is an option that's open to you if you've got enough money to spend. They're um, uh, accredited, uh, clinically valid, they have backup uh, genetic counselling services, and they have an expensive but accessible offering if you want to access your genetic uh, um, status <coughs> with regards to Mendelian disorder and find out that you're a carrier or not. So that's, that's all well and good and fine, but not offshore. The common morbidity space, the pharmacogenetic space, um, is, uh, it remains just as tall as I just described. There are some offerings which are thoroughly respectable, but they're very similar number. And the best services come with wraparound genetic counselling and proper consenting procedures prior to testing. So one acid test that I would apply if I was going to actually take up um, um, any of these offerings around the places is there actually uh, the ability for your patient to become educated and not be walking themselves into rather than actually taking it all on faith. And I hope that message resonates a bit with what Eric said before. I'm going to talk a little bit about non-invasive prenatal screening later, but what I'm not going to talk about is how diet and food and exercise and all these other traits are run up against um, um, in terms of genetic offerings.